Hey guys, today I'm going to look at some really neat tools that were introduced in the State of Unreal live stream. And these are the procedural mesh generation tools that are uh, included in the Lyra project you can download for free from the marketplace for Unreal Engine 5. Um, and the first tool I'll look at here is the advanced window tool. It's probably one of my favorite tools. It's basically just a chunk of wall with an opening. And what you can do here is I can grab, for example, this handle and move around this opening within the scene here within the mesh. So you can prototype kind of what you might want this to look like in real time. And then over here in the details panel, we have a bunch of other customizing options here. So I can select the wall here, for example, I can change the width. Maybe I want to make this wider, like 800. Uh, thickness here, maybe I want it thicker, say 50. Uh, the height here I can change, make it taller. So that's pretty basic stuff, right? And let's move on here to the opening. So I can obviously move the opening around. Uh, we've seen that here. And what I can do as well is change a bunch of the options about the opening. I can change this to, for example, a round uh, opening. And I'll set the radius to maybe 150. And uh, so now I've got this uh, rounded rectangle opening. And you can set these width and height to zero if you want just a perfect circle. Or, for example, uh, I could change this. Maybe I'll make this 75 and the width uh, 1,000. And you've got a long, skinny opening now. Uh, so you can set it up however you want. Whatever kind of window we're opening, if it's a doorway or if it's a window, um, you can do pretty much anything like that. Uh, so next here, I'll take a look at uh, opening border here, which is basically going to put a trim around your opening. And uh, you can adjust this trim thickness and the extrude amount here. Let's say you can make it 50 or 5 if you want. Uh, or you can adjust the extrusion amount here. Let's say you can make it really skinny, like 5, or uh, come out a lot, like 400 for some reason. Um, so you can adjust that however you want. And it also creates another material element so that you can change this trim to another material. So I'll set this to, for example, uh, this material here. And, uh, okay, next we've got the cutter. So the cutter here, I'll select custom cutter and uh, I can grab this handle and you can cut off a portion of this tool. Let's say you wanted to cut off the top or some of the bottom or the right or the left here. You can adjust these numbers here and cut away some of the tool. Uh, next we have has glass. So um, if it's uh, an archway or a doorway, maybe you don't add glass, but for a window, you can just add this. It adds a pane of material right there in the middle of the opening for you. And that gives, of course, a new material element here. So I can set this to any one of these glass materials that are included with this project. I'll just select that one, maybe. And uh, thickness, I can change this. You know, maybe make it really thin. You can make it uh, thicker. Uh, all right, I'll just leave it at five here. Has trim. So this is basically, uh, I'm going to add like a baseboard kind of thing to the bottom of the wall here. Uh, and I'll set that material element here to something we can see, maybe red. So it shows up a bit better here. And uh, again, you can adjust this. The height, for example, maybe you want it to be 50 or uh, 150. Or um, let's say you want it to be uh, thicker here. You could make this, you know, for example, 50. Or it could be a real thin thing like 5. Uh, so any kind of uh, trim that you're, you want there. And you can put that at the bottom or the top here. You can say uh, simple floating, I guess, interior, exterior. For some reason, that's... Uh, bottom and top, or a double simple floating here. You can put it in both, both spots. Uh, and then the other thing I can do here is select vertical. Maybe I want it on the sides instead. Or uh, you know, maybe you're using this panel in a different orientation. Maybe you've you know, turned it 90 degrees, and you got something like this. All right, so that covers the trim here. Now let's look at uh, extend wall. And so extend wall is going to basically give you uh, a 90 degree turn and extension on the wall and you can adjust here the radius maybe you want it to be a hard 90 degrees uh, or maybe you want it to be a real wide uh, corner like that and you can adjust the length of this extension so uh, maybe you want it to come out quite a ways like 1500 you have that whole bunch of wall added on like that or maybe you just want it to come out a little bit like 150 uh, so that's handy and the next thing we can do here is uh, mirror so I could mirror the entire tool. Let's say I want to mirror it. Um, uh, oh, I rotated it there. So let's see here, Z axis. There we go. And so I just doubled up the tool just like that. Uh, okay, and the last thing we can do here is bevel. And so this is just a handy feature to bevel the edges. So I'll just zoom in here. 
So by default, of course, you have all these hard 90 degree edges and uh, it doesn't look that great. Uh, edges in real life don't really look like 90 degree corners like this typically. Uh, so it helps with uh, to make a, a more realistic look and with lighting and reflections to just bevel these edges a little bit. I can select bevel combine and it puts this one centimeter bevel on every edge. And I can increase that if I want. Let's say I can make that a three centimeter bevel. All right. So that's pretty much the wall tool. And uh, when you're done with one of these tools, what you can do is you right click here and say scripted actor actions and say swap to static mesh. And so now instead of the tool, I've got this static mesh that I can uh, work with like any other static mesh. Like for example, I could hold alt, make a copy of this and you know, duplicate it up here. Um, or I can grab both of these and make you know, a duplicate of this over here, for example, you can start kitting out a level like this. And uh, okay, so the next thing that I'm going to look at then is, uh, let's look at the panel tool here. So the panel is just a pretty basic panel, uh, let's say platform. And what you can do here is basically you set the position where you want the one corner to be and grab the handle and drag it to the size you want it to be. Uh, you can also use a, a cutter look, uh, handle here and a mirror handle here. And then in the options over here, we can set the rest of the, uh, the dimensions. For example, uh, so there's two pieces here. It's a little bit hard to see. I'll change these materials. There's, uh, let's see here. Okay, so we've got the bottom and the edges here. And then this inset on the top here is a, a different material. And so yeah, you can change the amount of inset here. You could say you want to inset it by 50 or uh, 200 if you want it to be, you know, something like that. Or uh, you can even make this negative and let's say make negative 50. Now your top piece sticks out over the bottom. All right. And so uh, let's say we made this like negative 20 only and uh, top or extrude. Maybe we'll make it thicker like 20. Okay. So now we have this going on here. All right, and uh, let's see what else we can do here. Uh, we can also bevel again here. I can select bevel panel and we can bevel uh, the topper. Uh, we can bevel the panel or the topper or we can do a combined bevel. All right, and so uh, next I'll take a look at, uh, let's say the stairs tool here. So this is pretty neat as well. Uh, so the stairs tool, basically what you do is you set the tool to where you want the stairs to land. So let's say I want the stairs to uh, start down here and uh, maybe over here. And then you grab the handle here and you take it to the, the top position where you want the top of the stairs to be. So we want these to be way over here and up here. All right. Uh, and so you set that up like that. And then let's see, I can also adjust the width here, of course, with this handle. Maybe I want them to be a bit wider like that. Uh, and then in the uh, options here, I can set stuff like uh, the number of steps that I want to have here. So it's an adaptive step number or a fixed step number. So I can set a fixed step number and plug in a manual number here, eight steps, 12 steps, uh, 25 steps, whatever. Um, or you can set this to adaptive and set the step height here and it'll make how many it needs to reach the top. So I can say uh, 20 per step, you're going to use lots of steps, or I could say 50 per step and it's going to use uh, fewer steps. I'll set it to maybe 35 here. And uh, we can also say floating. So I don't want to have necessarily this whole huge uh, piece underneath the bottom here, say floating, and that's gone. Uh, all right, what else? I can say uh, simplified collision here. We want to add collision, of course, to that. And uh, we want to probably add a small bevel, always helps. And that's pretty much it for the stairs. So then I'll just right click here, scripted actor actions, swap to a static mesh. Uh, and I didn't swap this one either. I'll just swap that as well. All right, perfect. And so uh, maybe I'll just grab these and move these over here like this. All right. And uh, so let's see, we can also take a look at uh, this generated tube. 
And so uh, generated tube here, I can set the uh, number of degrees. Maybe I only want a half. Uh, maybe I want it to be uh, three quarters. And uh, radius, of course, 500, 100. Set it to uh, whatever size it is that you might want. And uh, thickness here, for example, 50, 500. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff here. Uh, the height, let's say we can set it to 1,000, make it a tall thing or you know 50 or whatever you want. Uh, start offset, that's just going to change where the uh, circle starts here. Say we set it to 90 or uh, 180, move it around like that. Uh, uh, use handles, that's uh, going to select to use the handles instead of these options here. If I select use handle, now I can grab uh, the vector handle here and do operations directly like this. Uh, or if I uncheck use handle, it's going to go back to using these numbers that I plugged in here. Uh, and of course, I can do a bevel on that as well. Um, so pretty straightforward, that one there. Uh, what else do we have here? The ramp, also pretty straightforward. So the ramp here, basically what I can do is I can set a uh, floor point and a top point. So I can set this, uh, oops, we'll move this up here like that, for example. And you can set how much uh, landing you want at the top of this ramp. So I can set it to, for example, have no landing at all, it's a straight ramp. Or I can set it so you come up and then have a bit of landing before the end or whatever. Uh, and then, of course, you can change your width with the handle there. Uh, so again, pretty straightforward stuff. And uh, there's a couple more in here, this uh, corner extrude. So you can make uh, sort of a archway or a, or a tunnel way, let's say, if you want. Uh, let's grab this handle here. Uh, we can increase the length like that and the dimensions that way. Uh, and then, of course, in the options here, you would uh, you can uh, change how far it's extruding in this dimension. So say zero, maybe you want it to be a round thing like that, or uh, maybe you want it to be really wide like that. Um, and the radius, so you can make it a hard corner or you can make it uh, a really big corner. Something like that if you wanted. Uh, or you can make it uh, completely round, I think, if you make these equal. Or uh, no, if you set extrude ceiling to zero. There we go. All right, so plenty of options with uh, that mesh. And uh, what else have we got here that's worth looking at? Maybe this uh, repeater tool here. And so this is basically just gonna repeat a mesh along a spline. And uh, you can grab the spline ends and move them to wherever you want. Uh, this red thing here is a, a debug draw that it's just showing you here uh, sort of as a indicator of where your spline is located, I think. I'm not quite sure how to turn that off right now. Uh, okay, so what you can do here, for example, is I can grab the end of this and I can twist this. So I can make like a spiral staircase here, for example, uh, or something, you know, like that or whatever you might have in mind that, you, that would use a spline like to this effect. Okay, so that pretty much covers uh, what I wanted to look at here with these tools. And uh, so definitely something to uh, consider using in terms of whether using these tools or making uh, tools to uh, suit your specific project that will let you kit bash out levels like this very quickly. All right, well, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.